All right, my brother's over 50. Well, let's even say over 40. I have the answers for you for two of your biggest bodybuilding problems, and I'm going to hit you with both of them right now. Hold on tight. All right. Welcome back to Mr. America Heart. My name is John Hart, and uh, it's been a fun role here at Mr. America Heart. Uh, I have quite a lot of videos for men over 50 and over that 40-ish range when, you know, for a lot of you guys, things start to change. And so uh, if you hit my playlist section, I'll, I'll give you a, uh, a link down below that you can go ahead and check out my playlist on the men over 50 and over 40. You can check it out and see just exactly a lot of the top issues that you deal with and some good solutions. But for today, I have two big ones for you, okay? Number one, first and foremost, is the loss of your former muscle mass. Wow. So how do we counter that, gentlemen? And <clears throat> it might seem simple, lift weights. It might seem simple, eat more protein. It might seem pretty simple like that. But then why is it not working for a lot of you? Okay. And how do you go about making the proper changes? Well, uh, on this number one issue, losing muscle mass, some people call it sarcopenia, and that is kind of fatalistic. I call that a fatalistic definition of the situation because once you give something a name, then it's almost a disease that you're taking on. And so I'd rather not do that. And let's just say that the situation at hand is that you find yourself, uh, You've noticed that the lean muscle mass has changed. You've noticed that <clears throat> perhaps uh, uh, it's a little bit harder to recover from your workouts and you're getting sore for quite a bit from your workouts. Well, the first answer to that is, is when you are getting sore from your workouts, the great thing about having a long-term database of training under your belt and training hard, mind you, I'm not talking about going through the motions. I'm talking about training hard. If you're training hard, your mind to muscle connection is actually better past 50 than it was when you were in your 20s or 30s. Okay? That repetitive nature of it becomes embedded in your system to where it's second nature. You could skip doing squats or deadlifts or uh, you know, overhead barbell presses. You could skip doing them for months at a time and then pick them back up again and the pattern of lifting is still there within you. The, after so many years of practicing it, by the way, the strength level might not be there, but the pattern of doing the movement is because it's just, poof, a part of you at that point. So how do we counter all this or how do we handle all this? And the number one thing is, is uh, when the muscle mass seems to be challenged and starting to go, uh, yes, you do need to make some adjustments. Okay, When it comes to your workouts themselves, you cannot work out like you did when you're in your 20s and your 30s. You have to throw those workouts out the window. Okay, Reinvent yourself and do it fearlessly. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you've never trained in high-intensity training fashion, hit, let's say, then you need to study some Dorian Yates, some Mike Menser, some of my books that I've written. You can find them also down below in the links. I'll, uh, I'll give you a good link you know, for some of my downloads, you can get some good information right quick. And basically shorter workouts done less often, and they allow you to recover and grow. Whereas when you're in your 20s or 30s, you may have been able to grow or get stronger and or get stronger on multiple workouts per week. It may be time to cut that down. And I'm suggesting to you, it is time to cut that down. And also, how to do that and how often should you train and should you cut back on your training as far as the volume or the intensity? And the answer is no. You, you give it all the intensity that you have. The volume, yeah, you have to cut that down because you just are not going to recover if you dig too deep of a hole. So adjust your workouts, the workout frequency. Adjust the volume of those workouts down a little bit. So downscale it so that you can get better recovery and you should see some immediate growth. Again, Workout routines from Dorian Yates, Mike Menser, and you can go ahead and check out my books on my website, MrAmericaHeart.com. I have Physique 101. That one will be an interesting one for you. Uh, and Mr. America Shape Up series. That'll help you out a lot if you've been an experienced lifter. So yes, and dietary-wise, what do you do? As you get older, your enzyme production drops off a little bit. And that includes your digestive enzymes. Therefore, you do need to take some digestive enzymes. I would. 
that's at least, you know, in my case, I do, and helps to break down protein specifically. Uh, the absorption of protein becomes less uh, as a lot of people age, and therefore you have to increase your ability to break it down and absorb it. So it's not what goes in your mouth, it's what you actually absorb into your body once it's in your gut. So it either goes down the toilet, or it's burned up for energy, or it's absorbed by your body and utilized for recovery and growth of new muscle tissue. And that's what we're after. So give yourself the best option or the best chance at breaking down the food and absorbing it properly by using digestive enzymes. I'll put down below in the video description a great link for a great product that I use myself. So that's one I believe we've handled in as fast as I could speak format uh, of one of the big problems that you might face as you're getting past 50 with regards to your training and your muscle mass. And the big problem that all the all over 50 may be facing is health related. I, I, I know that a lot of y'all don't seem to think that taking blood pressure medication, by the way, for example, I should say, for example, uh, is going to affect your bodybuilding, but it does. Taking cholesterol medication going to affect your bodybuilding, but it does. Uh, it, you know, these are internal situations, right, that affect how your body processes food, how it reacts to training, okay? Uh, I, I, I remember sitting in one of the shows that I did with Rick Drayson, uh, you know, the equalizer on the Rick Drayson show, and one of the things that Rick really hated was that he was on blood pressure meds and he complained about uh, certain, you know, certain issues that he had personally because of the blood pressure meds. And one of them in particular was uh, he couldn't stand that when he would go to work out, he wouldn't get a pump in the muscles like he did when he was younger because it dropped his blood pressure so much that he just was, you know, pretty much flaccid, so to speak, within the muscles. So he'd be doing a lot of work, but not necessarily getting this big raging pump in the muscle. Uh, you know, it was taking out some of that electrolyte, some of the fluid from the muscle. So it wasn't just blood pressure meds. Uh, it was also uh, diuretics combined with blood pressure meds. So that's one issue. If you're over 50 and there's any kind of health issue that's requiring to take some kind of medication, I'm not in any way, first of all, saying get off the medication. I'm not doing that. And I don't recommend you do such a thing unless you've gone to your physician and all of your markers are great, and there's really no need to take them, then you can talk to your physician about it and do it intelligently so you don't just stop doing such things. Uh, that being the case, the best way to go about getting your health in check, because your bodybuilding is going to suffer, mind you. I don't know too many men over 50 that don't face at least one or two challenges with their health. And... In almost every one of their cases, it's directly related to the fact that they're carrying too much body fat. And that right there, my friends, is the answer. I'm going to give you two answers to this problem of being as healthy as you can be. Number one is dropping that body fat as low as possible. And I'm talking about to get those markers that we can have control over and to turn them around for the better. So dropping that body fat down. Get on a diet. Okay? Get on a diet and stick to it. And drop that body fat as low as you can. And miraculously, all, all, almost all of these health issues magically delicious disappear. Okay? That's just one big fat observation I've had as a trainer with all my clients over the years. Is their body fat going down? If they're 40 pounds overweight, I can think of one man right now that he told me straight out of high school, he's now 36, and out of high school, he's 70 pounds heavier now, or when I met him, than when he was when he graduated high school. 70 pounds. He looked pretty normal. He just had a basketball of a belly. The rest of them looked pretty normal. So what did we do? I set him on his way to drop about 45 pounds of it because he believed he grew an inch or two also in that time frame. So what happened along the way was before we ever got to 45 pounds burned off of him, he hit around 20, 25 pounds. All of his markers were coming into line, all of them, with the blood work that we had him taking every month. 
So he went in, got blood work done, simple, cheap, done. And his markers were all getting better and better each time. His blood pressure has been high since he was 21. That's amazing for a 21-year-old to have high blood pressure. He's been taking medication since he was 21. So now at 36, this is the very first time in his entire adult life that he's not taking blood pressure meds. In coordination with his physician, when his blood pressure started dropping and nose diving, obviously, you know, that's a problem. And it was because his body weight was down, his body fat was down, and he just didn't need a high blood pressure medication anymore. So the doc immediately cut it in half. And then when that was still dropping his blood pressure too low, that's when he could make the case for doc. What should I do? And the doc said, you don't need it anymore. And he got off of those meds and he's been fine ever since. So for the first time in 15 years as an adult, he's not taking blood pressure meds. So I know I'm focusing on the blood pressure, but it could be any one of a multitude of things. Uh, any one of the major organs, okay? Heart, kidney, liver, uh, uh, you know, pancreas, all, all of those things. You know, when we talk about pancreas, I'm talking about the ability to, uh, to generate insulin and, you know, your body's ability to react properly to insulin and open up the muscle cells that insulin carrying sugar. So to avoid bad situations, becoming pre-diabetic, diabetic, diabetic, uh, again, all of that is related to being over fat and being on a bad diet. Once you bring that all into line, it all comes together. So Live lean, my friends, over 40. That's the message right there. Live lean over 50. If you do, you'll have great markers. Your physician will be happy with you. And it's pretty much an outlier situation way out there on the bell curve where you may get struck you know, or attacked by some weird disease. So, But all the majors are handled and in shape. So my question becomes, why poke at the bear? And it's not just related to this complete, complete overfat situation with the majority of the men over 50, but it's also related to the chronic lack of sleep. I've addressed this directly in multiple videos that if you don't get your sleep together somehow, some way, okay, you can't recover and grow. So your workout's going to suffer. You're on a bad cycle spiraling downwards. Got to get that sleep together. Okay? So that's it for today. So the two big problems facing men over 50, number one, loss of muscle mass, and and then number two, uh, heading down the road of bad health, which is going to affect your bodybuilding as well. Okay? Bad health in general is bad for bodybuilding. But now combine that with being on medications that counter a lot of the things that we try to do in bodybuilding for the good. And that's it. So there's your countermeasures from my heart to you, John Hart. Hey, before you go off to my left, you're going to find a disc pop up next to my head right about now. That disc is the subscribe button for my channel. Please give that thing a tap. It lets YouTube know how much you like my videos. And down below, off to your left, you're going to see a thumbs up button. That thumbs up button also lights up the YouTube algorithm. They like it. I like it too. So please give that thing a tap and turn it blue. I will see you soon.